Hello and welcome to Nick Foley UK. Today we're going to unearth the mysteries of the Leslie 610. Not many people know much about that and I must admit, neither did I, but I do now and I want to share it with you. So here we are. I've turned it round and I've taken the back off. It has some rather spiffing casters on here, like um, furniture casters, because that's, you know, it's a piece of furniture, right? Uh, I don't know if they were standard or optional ex extra actually in, in the 70s or who knows, 60s and 70s, who knows. But here we are, here's the, here's the little fella, and this is the 6610. And I don't know much about this one. Well, I didn't know much about this one, but when I got it open, I realized there's a lot I don't know. What is, let's have a look at what's strange at the moment, shall we? So we go from the top. Well, this is usually up under there, isn't it? So that's a bit odd. Why is that there? That's strange. And then this isn't a pair of horns, is it? It's, it looks like some car speakers. Can you see that? With two cutouts. And they're called rotosonic. So rotosonic drum. At the bottom, we go, OK, well, there's a drum there. We, we're used to the drum. Let me just show you down there, my friends. Thank you. We're used to the drum, aren't we? But hang on, there's something wrong here as well. Same thing. You've got a cutout with a speaker, just the one speaker. So the idea here, hello, the idea here was the, the, the instead of having uh, Leslie, like a 145 or a 122 or 147 or whatever, instead of having a counterweight and a speaker and a drive that went up through the bottom, here you've got something slightly different. You've actually got the two speakers and they're going, they are moving away from you and coming back. They're Doppling, aren't they, you know, to create that Doppler effect. And it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not the same, but it isn't bad, actually. OK, so we notice that. Then we go, well, hang about, something wrong here, because we're used to having this bottom speaker here. We're used to having this bottom speaker. Of course we are. But it's dog-legged off the, off the spindle. So what's, what's going on there? Well, that's a stationary speaker. OK, well, here we are. So we've got two spinny speakers. We've got a stationary speaker. What on earth is going on? Well, it gets even funnier because in here, and hopefully you pick this one up on this camera, in that corner there is yet another speaker. So, we've got speakers all over the place. And a friend of mine bought this on eBay as a bit of a, a, bit of a chance purchase, to be honest. Uh, frankly, just for the, the cabinet, it's amazing. To see what we could do with it. And now the, the Rotosonic sounds okay, and the stationary speaker is interesting because he, if he was to uh, use it as a Deep Purple tribute band, for example, you could have stationary for, you know, your Deep Purple in rocks and your fireballs and all that kind of stuff. And then you could have slow, fast and stop on the, on the Rotosonics as well for your Stormbringers and uh, Burns and what have you. So, interesting. But it's complicated. Let me get down here and we'll see how complicated it, it really is. So... As you can see down there, let's see if I can move my little, my little helper here. I've got a little helper, look. There he is. All right. There's a lot, there's a lot going on down there. I don't know if you can see how many of the tubes just go off into the distance. And the reason is, and this, this is where the, the signal comes out as well. One, two, three, four. All of the outputs. So basically, this Leslie was really made for the, your kind of, your theatre organ kind of thing, you know. Um, so, I'll put my little notes there, brilliant. So we've got the two rotors there, we've got five speakers knocking about, and the theatre organs that used to work particularly well for it were the R series. Now, what were they? One, R100s and H100s, I think, were the ones. And the idea is that you could output separately different sounds, some into the vibrato chorus effect of the rotosonic, and some into the stationery. You wouldn't want, I don't know, a bell or a whistle sound out of a theatre organ going through a slow turn of a rotosonic, would you? So that was, that was the kind of the plan that you could output them into different places. Pretty clever, really. It's uh, reasonably powerful. It ranges from, I've seen someone say they're 65 watts, I've seen someone say they're 150 watts. I imagine there's a combination that can go there because it is a four channel uh, valve amplifier. So it's a quick one, really, because I, I just thought it was, it's different, isn't it? It's, I mean, we, I've not seen one like this before. The case, the case, the cab, 
Same height as the 147, 122 really, and beautiful condition it is too. Yet, as you can see, these are the things that turn throughout Sonics either way, and they're not encapsulated by speakers that go in and, and down, which is what's different. That's dogleg, the speaker in the corner there, you've got this at the top. So, you know, is it gonna, is it gonna work for what we want it for? We don't want it for a, a H or an R organ, you see. We want it for a modern Hammond Suzuki organ, and how are we gonna do that? Well, we started having a bit of a mess about, look, as you can see, getting it, getting it to accept quarter inch jack's not that, that tricky, but where you root it is, a, is another thing, isn't it? So. One idea we thought, well, maybe we could convert it, convert it back and get put a rotor in here and what have you. But this board is very different because this is from the top, not from the bottom. If you remember on the 122, um, 145, there's a, there's a case bit here that this hangs from. It works that way. Uh, and so we don't really think that getting that board out and another board in would really make it worthwhile, despite how fantastic the cabinet is. So, quickie, quickie for you today. Isn't it odd? So when you see a uh, 610 for sale, you now know that it's got speakers at the YR. Some of them are stationary, some of them move, but they don't move in the way that you remember the 122 and the 145 and the, and the Doppler effect. The Doppler is created differently by these sort of car stereo style speakers, so they look like them, that actually spin in this huge old drum. And uh, it wasn't working when we first, first took it in, but now listen to that. What are you hearing? Nothing, exactly, because it sounds really nice. So it's been, been fixed, we changed the, the tyre a little bit and that, that's helped as well, but it's, it's a big old thing. So the ramp up's slightly different, as you can imagine, to the, to the, the small uh, horns of the 122 and 145. So quick guide to the Leslie 610. I hope that was interesting. Um, as ever, if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, please go and see me on Patreon and say hello and you'll be welcome to that. I'm always thirsty for coffee, as you can imagine, down here. Otherwise, I'm going to keep this content coming on. I've got plenty more stuff coming along the line at the minute and I might even get off the floor. It's very cold here in the past uh, in England in 2024, if, you, if you're from the future, that is. If you're from the present, it's, it's now, you know. Well, you know that. Of course you do. So, just a quick one for you. Uh, I'll get the front back off on this now and uh, we're looking at to, uh, getting it spinning and we're going to put a quarter inch on it, see what we think of it and see if it's good enough to run as a, as a Deep Purple kind of tribute thing. Um, one thing I will say, I did want to remember, it's very heavy. So remember that, friends? It's very heavy. We had to get it out of a car, two of us, and uh, I really felt it. <laughs> so, there you go, me bla blabbering on again. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy this. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Do <laughs> <laughs>